So I thought I would just uh, very quickly go through uh, this ukulele manual that I made, the second one. It's uh, very similar to the first one, uh, the difference being that this is made in all solid cherry wood. So top, sides, which I book matched. It's a tiny little strip of ash there. And back and neck are all cherry wood with a strip of oak just to give some stability. And a cherry faceplate. Ebony violin pegs. Also as the fifth there. It has a mahogany nut, maybe a bit unusual, but give it a try, seems to work. And it obviously has a zero fret as well, so strings aren't going to be eating into the mahogany they're actually resting on, on this zero fret here. Uh, I made a different version of the bridge here, uh, which is actually also cherry. See, it's a lot darker, but it was another piece of scrap I had, which turned out to be much darker cherry wood than the other one. <clears throat> and it's put on to uh, attach to a mandolin bridge. And it has different kind of attachment. It's just knots here and a groove in there. The plan from the beginning was that the strings were supposed to go around here but um, meant the string angle over the bridge was too not not big enough so it wasn't enough tension on it and it's got a uh, let's see that I think it's it's an elm bridge and a cherry fretboard with my usual sort of half moon Thing. There's no position markers and nothing on the front since this one is built for myself. I prefer it that way, particularly on a banjo or a banjola. I, I really don't think, or I, I don't think I need it. But she got this as a reference point, and then after that, it's quite easy to find your way. But that's my preference. Uh, the thing that didn't go quite to plan is this, you know not sit here and pretend that everything is just fine. The top has warped a tiny bit after. You can see it just dips down there. Um, I finished this one about two months ago and since I've been uh, uh, moving I just bought myself a, a flat so uh, I haven't had really time to do this. It's been played a bit but lying around for two months and nothing's happened more. It hasn't got any worse worse and I think it sounds pretty nice I'm just gonna let it I mean if, if it blows the top I'll just have to repair it so uh, this is the first instrument that I put the French polish on I thought, I'm not quite sure what it, it's it's one of these amber French shellacs I think it gives it sort of a nice vintage feel and I'm reasonably pleased with the, the result. It's, it's not the easiest technique to do, you know, so the neck turned out really nice. The neck is also slightly chunkier than the previous one I made. Same thing there, but it's, it's for, made for my specs, which is the great thing about building instruments. You make them just as we want. The thing I'm, I'm most pleased about this one is definitely the neck. It's really low action here and there's no buzzing, the frets are like a railway track. What well, I used for that, I used a, a diamond uh, sharpener, a tool sharpener basically, and leveled the frets. And it worked just fine and they, it cost nowhere near as much as, as one of these real fret levers, lev levelers, which are quite expensive. But it seemed to do the trick and I really like the neck the feel of the neck, so that's what I'm pleased with. I also think I 
has a nice uh, warm sound to it. Uh, I think it's probably partly to do with the with the cherry wood. Uh, and I'm also using uh, the other one I made. I used baritone ukulele strings, which are, are thinner, which probably gives a snappier sound. This is uh, classical guitar strings. Which is probably why it gives a little bit of that sort of guitar sound to it. But I don't I don't mind that. I think it's it sounds very nice as it is. So, so pleased with this one. Not perfect, but uh, plays well, sounds nice and I know what mistakes I made. So that's what it's all about, improvement. And the next one, hopefully, fingers crossed, will be perfect. So, thanks for watching, take care, bye bye.